You know your phone is being tracked, but even when it's in standby mode without your knowledge? Well, I'm gonna show you exactly that. And I warn you, it isn't good. So let's take a phone and we're gonna factory reset it. We're gonna start from scratch. And I'm going to actually skip over signing into the Google account. I am not going to connect it to a mobile network. I'm gonna skip over that. And I'm gonna disable all the features where it gives me the option to send user location. I'm gonna disable that. And I'm certainly not gonna send any usage and diagnostics data. So now I have a phone, nothing's logged in, just the default apps that gets installed with the phone. Right, now that the phone is set up, the way we're gonna monitor the connections from the phone is with a system called Pi-hole. Pi-hole is what is known as a sinkhole DNS. And what does that mean? Well, you know that a DNS is like the contact list in your phone. You don't remember everybody's cell phone number, so you store it in your phone. And when you need to call that person or text that person, you just type in the name, it looks up their phone number and basically makes that connection. It's the same thing for the internet. You wanna head over to google.com, your computer gets the IP address from the DNS and off your browser goes. So what Pi-hole does is act as the DNS, but it first checks to make sure that the website you're trying to connect to isn't on its bad list websites. If it is, it doesn't let your device connect to it, which is how it tends to block a lot of the ads. It's a very simplistic way of looking at Pi-hole, but for our purposes, it does the job. Let's expose the websites that your phone is constantly trying to connect even when it's in standby mode and even when you are not using the phone. So let's connect the phone to the Pi-hole system and start monitoring. So on my phone, I'm gonna change the IP address of the device and make sure that it's logging everything correctly. So 192.168.50.202, this is important, that's the IP address of this phone. I'm also gonna change the DNS so it connects straight to the Pi-hole system that I've set up. 192.168.50.26. So now, remember the 202 is important, that's the IP address of this device. There is no secondary DNS, let's just make sure there's nothing in there, because I want everything to go straight through to that pie hole so we can monitor everything. Let's give it a test, and there it is, already 10 connections, click on query logs, and you can clearly see here under the client address, 192.168.50.202. So we know that the phone is communicating straight through to Pi-hole, and it's already started to log things like accounts.google.com. Okay, let's just go back to the phone. I want you to just double check that I have not logged in to Gmail or to my Google accounts at all. I have just using the standard apps that have came with the phone. And all I wanna see is what is currently being sent from my phone to Pi-hole. And you can see there's a whole bunch of them that have already come through. And the one I'm looking at is app-measurement.com. Well, what is that? Well, it looks like it's a tracking tool used by the company called Firebase, which was acquired by Google. And quote, it was reverse engineered to find a surprising amount of private data being sent. And if I just wanna double check what Firebase is, yep, there it is, and it's hosted under the Google domain. So that all tracks out correctly. And if you dig a little bit deeper, you find that the Firebase Analytics SDK provides a variety of tools and features to help developers track user behavior, including tracking screen views, events, and other user properties. Uh, no big secret that a phone is being tracked and so is our activity, but here we can see it in nice and red. And we're only getting started. So this also caught my attention, a domain called gvt1.com with a whole bunch of subdomains. And what is that? Well, I found this little piece. Should we be concerned about gvt1.com? Well, the GVT actually stands for Google Video Transcoding. And basically, Google uses it to deliver official content, Chrome browser updates, and Android-related executable. Mm, okay, so it seems necessary, but let's be honest, without a SIM card, and without a Google account, and with no apps, the phone is kind of useless right now. It is also not a real situation, so let's step it up. It's time to just log into Google account and see if that brings up anything weird or suspicious. 
Okay, let's log in. Let's click on the Google Play Store. Let's sign in, go through the normal stuff. And now I'm logged in. Let's keep my eye out on the time. It's 8.01 so, and I've got 113 connections. Let's go to the query log and you can see a whole bunch of new stuff has come in through to the pie hole. Some interesting stuff is here, like a lot of Google API stuff. Um, there is lots of content stuff. There is things that, well, I suppose make sense because Google is sending you information. You've just logged in to the Play Store. It needs to communicate. Oh, but look at this, doubleclick.net. Well, let's figure out what that is. So it's Enterprise Advertising and Analytics Solution. So this is Google Marketing Platform. So it allows advertisers to get more insights on the stuff that we do with their application, things that happen on the phone. Shocker, some advertising and tracking has entered the scene. It's time to install some apps so this phone acts like a normal phone. So let's start with Instagram and I'm installing it, clicking open, but I am not logging in. I'm just opening the application. So let's install some more. Here is Facebook, same thing. Just pressing the open button after it's installed and not logging in. Let's do a couple more. I'm gonna do Amazon shopping, of course, TikTok, let's do that. Let's do Timo, Threads, let's do LinkedIn as well. All following the same process, simply installing and pressing the open button and that's it. And here you can see all the apps I've just installed. The next day. It got late, so for full disclosure, I stopped the test last night and I'm continuing it today, which is the next day, which you can see by the dates in the pie hole logs. So now I have apps installed. The phone is still in standby mode and sitting right here on my desk. I am not logged into any apps. Let's see what the logging system says. Well, as can be expected, you can see we have a whole bunch of connections being made now that we have a whole bunch of apps installed. Let's start by filtering it down. Let's just look at TikTok. Let's see what connections TikTok has made. And here you can see all the connections, the DNS lookups that TikTok has made. This is tiktokv.us. And one thing that immediately strikes me is just the sheer number of connections, but look how quickly they come in, one after each other. And in fact, there's a whole bunch that happens in the same milliseconds. So the phone is on standby, TikTok is not logged in, and yet it's still setting out these bursts and bursts of connection requests to these various domains. Let's see if we can figure out what some of these domains actually are. So let's copy and paste some of these domains into Google. And I'm trying to figure out if there's anything to worry about, if there's anyone that's flagged anything. There's nothing I can see that stands out immediately. The only thing I can see is that there are people who have created a list to block TikTok. And look at this, how many domains are actually associated just with TikTok? You would have to block all of these if you wanna stop people from actually getting to TikTok, but it's nothing that tells me what this subdomain actually does. It's surprising to me that all these TikTok related domains are simply not found online. And I'm wondering why that is. I also notice how these are being sent in bursts from the phone. And remember, I just installed TikTok and not logged in. Mm, so the question is, is it the same for the other apps as well? Okay, let's carry on. So we've seen TikTok, now let's look at Facebook. And Facebook actually doesn't seem to have that many connections request. Every once in a while goes to graph.facebook.com and if we do a quick Google search, you'll end up on the Meta Development Handbook and it tells you it's a way to get data in and out of Facebook, which is how developers are able to post stories, are able to update photos, all right, let's get back into it. There is Instagram, a couple of calls here, nothing too exciting. What else have we got? Let's look at Amazon. Oh, look at this, device-metrics, that was blocked. I wonder what that is. So a quick Google search and we'll end up on this page. It was published on the 11th of May, 2022, and it is on the ftc.gov page. And this article is titled, Tracking, Profiling and Ad Targeting in the Amazon Smart Speaker System. <clears throat> that doesn't leave me excited at all. Let me just do a quick search for device metrics and there it is. And it says it's used by Amazon to collect device metrics. It is the most prominent tracking domain. Most contacted third-party advertising and tracking services include Megaphone and PodTrack, 
both of which specialize in audio advertising and tracking services. Lovely. Great. Audio advertising and tracking services. Feeling warm and fuzzy about your device yet? Next up on our list is Timu. Let's see what that does. That's an interesting domain. Let's take that and stick it into Google. And again, nothing really too exciting besides the fact that, well, you may choose not to use Timo for other security reasons. Timo is associated with a Timo application. Like, okay, like no kidding. But look at this, notable other host names. Let's see, US, there's our domain we were trying to search and a whole bunch of other domains as well, but all going to Timo. Okay, so there's no information about this domain either, but based on Netify's list, it seems like it may just be Timu's website in the US. Each of those domains seems to have like a country code, like ZA for South Africa and NZ for New Zealand, but that is purely a guess. Next up, we have Threads, which has got zero connections. That's good. Twitter, well, it's got a couple of connections here and there to the Twitter API, but nothing that screams alarms here. And we have Spotify with one connection last night. So that's not even going on today. And let's say Venmo, nothing there. PayPal, nothing there either. That's good, which means it's not communicating. What about Lyft? Well, one connection to the Lyft. Uber has got a bunch of connections, including a geo1.uber.com, which is used to basically identify where your phone is. LinkedIn has got a bunch of connections, but all going to www.linkedin.com. All right, so nothing really stood out, not too many connections from those apps. So I guess there's only one more thing left to do, and that is put my username and password into those apps and log in. I'm only gonna log in to four apps. I'm gonna do Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Amazon. And back to the system we go. Now that we're logged in, we're gonna have a whole bunch of connections. Let's filter it down. So let's start off by going to Instagram, Again, nothing exciting here, just a bunch of connections. Facebook, nothing really weird that's popping out here, and certainly nothing that was blocked by Piehole. That's unexpected, but okay. What about TikTok? Interesting. Okay, same domains as we had before with a couple of extra ones, but nothing that's blocked by Piehole, which means that after I've logged into TikTok, I would have expected at least some other stuff to come through, but it hasn't. That's cool to see. All right, what about Amazon? Uh-oh, Amazon, what are you doing? Uh, I see a domain for adsystem.com, so that's happening. And Amazon, why so many connections constantly? I mean, the phone is on standby. Dang, I didn't expect that. Only Amazon seemed to have picked up a lot more traffic and connections with some more domains being flagged and blocked for ads and tracking. Even TikTok behaved, which I'm pretty surprised about. For those of you who've stuck around this long, you're obviously curious, as I am, as to what the phone actually does, even when we don't touch the phone. So a couple of things I've picked up here. The first is that the phone is always communicating with multiple domains from each and every app. More communication if you're logged in, but still communicating even if you've just installed a never log into an app. The second thing is communicating in burst. Sometimes in the same milliseconds, there are a bunch of DNS lookups. This is super strange to me as the servers that try to communicate with surely don't change their IP address that often. So why put unnecessary lookup time each time they need to talk to that server? I would assume that if you do it once a day or once an hour, that would be sufficient. And yet that communicating multiple times in the same milliseconds, super strange behavior. Number three is that we have no idea what is actually being sent to each of these websites. Some of the data is encrypted, which is both good and bad. Good as people can't steal and mess with them, but bad, we can't see what's being sent, so we don't know what information is actually leaving our phones. And number four, and I've said it before, but I'll say it again, these are only DNS lookups. Hey, whatever strange TikTok Amazon domain, what's your IP address? That is all that we are monitoring. Could there be other things being sent and received by their device? 100%. Could the device be communicating directly with an IP address that doesn't require DNS? Absolutely. 
But these are videos for another day. For me, this is just an eye opener as to just how much we just don't know about the communication device that we carry with us every day and everywhere. I'd love to know what you think now that you've seen just a tiny fraction of the stuff that is being sent by our devices to who knows where and communicating who knows what information. I would also highly suggest that everybody uses a VPN. It's not gonna stop these companies from getting your data, but some VPNs actually have similar facilities to Pi-hole, so that could help as well. Check out some of the free VPNs that don't actually suck, and no, none of them sponsored that video for all you grumpy cynics out there. Give the video a quick thumbs up before you head out, and I'll see you in this video. Let's go.